Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Uh, this week I am coming to you from Finland. So um, I just wanted to apologize that I have been on the road a lot recently, so my coverage of the forums hasn't been um, as, as good as I like it to be. And I'd like to remind you that if you ever um, run into any technical questions and uh, the wonderful other users of the forums, the power users, don't get back to you with something helpful, then um, you can always contact support at toomboom.com um, if I don't get back to you quickly enough on the forums. Um, so this week I thought I'd like to start a little bit of a series uh, called Working in 3D Space. And um, I'm going to start it out this week in Storyboard Pro 3D, and then I'll go into Anime Pro and Harmony um, next week. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started here. I created myself a blank project in Storyboard Pro 3D. And I'm just going to show you a couple of really simple things um, on how to work in a 3D space. So there's a couple of different aspects of 3D space. And the first aspect of 3D space is simply the concept of a multiplane. So let's say, I'm just going to take my brush tool here and I'll draw, let's make this a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe I'll use my brush presets view here since I set up some new brush presets for myself this morning. So I've got my tree here. And maybe I want to create a few different layers of trees. So I might have one layer of trees here that's kind of my mid-ground. And, um, oops, I meant to do that I'm on the same layer as the first one. So let's say this layer here is going to be my mid-ground layer. And then um, I'll go back to my B layer. And on the B layer, maybe I'll do some trees for the background. Do a bunch of them all kind of together there. It's like a forest. It's a forest of trees. Um, and then I'll do a big tree for the foreground. So let's just do that guy in the center and I can reposition him after. Um, and one of the things that I was pointing out to a client earlier today is that I often, when I'm doing storyboards, I like to create a brush preset um, that is a, a big white brush preset just so that I can go in there and I can fill in with white and then it's just going to cover up anything in the background. Sorry, it's a little bit uh, slow when I use Camtasia here, it becomes a little bit slow, um, the drawing tool. Um, but so yeah, I just like to fill that guy in there and I'll do another um, tip of the week later about brush presets and how to set those up. Um, but for now, I just wanted to show you that you can quickly fill that in. Otherwise, of course, you can still use your paint bucket to fill things in. It's just that you need to have the areas closed when you do so. So when we want to do a multiplane in Storyboard Pro, by default, when you use your transform tools, you've got these two transform tools, the first frame and the last frame transform tool there that are available to you. And when you use these transform tools, by default, it wants to move things around just in 2D space. So left and right, uh, up and down, not backwards and forwards. So if we want to move things backwards and forwards in space, you've got to enable 3D on your scene. And as soon as you enable 3D, now you get this super transform tool. But in addition to using the super transform tool here, you want to rotate your view. And I'm working in the stage view right now, and the stage view is the view that you're going to be able to rotate. The stage view, think of it as where you're setting the stage. So you can hit... Um, Command and Shift on Mac and Control and Shift on Windows to move your view around. And now from here, you could move the tree forward in space. So my big tree is going to go forward, and then I'll take my little trees there and I'll move them back. And then I've got my medium tree there in the, in the mid-ground. And so you see why I, I was trying to white out my big tree there, because it um, you can see some of the background through it as you're looking there. And so um, if I want to go back and adjust this tree some more, if I try to take my drawing tool, like my brush tool here, I get a no entry sign. And the reason I get the no entry sign is because I'm not facing the layer. Like, for example, if you're really looking at the side of it and you try to paint in this layer, since you're not facing the layer, you're looking at the side of it, you wouldn't draw that way even when you're drawing on paper, right? You're always going to look at the paper. So that's why we've got this option, look at selected. And so when I have my layer selected and I hit look at selected, it just pops that view to be perpendicular to my camera. So I can go back with my white brush again and just fill in a little bit more um, the area there that's 
that's behind just to make it a bit easier to look at. So now as I rotate my workspace around, and there's still a little bit of a gap there in the center, so um, what you can always do is just put a little bit of paint underneath where the gaps are, and then take your paint and painted tool, and I don't need to have my closed gap on for this, and I'll just paint it in. And uh, should should fill it in, but in any case, I won't worry about that one too much right now since uh, Camtasia slows it down a little bit. So the main thing that I'm looking at here is creating that multiplane, and that's the first aspect of working in a 3D space. Um, and you kind of want to be able to see what's happening from the camera view as well, though. Um, I tend to like to add my camera view in the middle. So in order to do that, you can just click on the down-facing arrow there and select camera view to add your camera view to this space. And then you can click and drag it down to the side. So, um, in other words, let me do that again just so you can see exactly what I did. I can click on the tab here at the top and then I can drag it in between the two windows over here. And then when I let go, it's going to pop it in between so that I can see. And I always like to turn on my camera mask in the camera view because it just makes it a bit easier to see um, from the perspective of the camera what's happening. And when you want to really see a multiplane in action, you kind of have to have a camera move. So to do a camera move, I'll just take my camera tool and then I can pop a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of my panel. And now from, from the stage view, I can take my camera frame there and I can move it around. If you click on the, um, in the tool properties, if you click on the go to selected keyframe button, it will move your playhead to where the keyframe is in the timeline. And when it does that, you'll also be able to adjust the position of the camera from the camera view. Um, and the reason for that is that you can only adjust the position from the camera view if you're on the keyframe. Because as you move your playhead around, the camera view adjusts. And you only really want to adjust the camera view when you're seeing what you're looking at. So in other words, if I select that green frame, which is the start frame, and I go to select a keyframe, it's going to move it to that frame so that I'm looking through the frame. And from here now, I could do something like I could zoom out and move to the side, or I could even rotate it this way. Um, maybe I'll zoom it in a bit more. So then if I look at this um, camera action, now I see this move happening between these trees. So that's the first aspect of 3D. Now just to um, have a little bit more fun, on my BG layer here, uh, what I'll do is I'll go back and use my line tool and um, I'll just make sure that I select uh, the black color since I'm still on white there. So I'll just, with my line tool, I'll draw a little bit of a road there. And so with my line tool selected, I'm dragging down and I'm holding shift to keep it, um, to keep those lines going straight up and down. Now, if I use my transform tool on this layer, I can, um, I can take this layer and I can rotate it in X. So you can also rotate layers. You can move layers in a multiplane, and you can rotate layers around. Now as I rotate this layer in, um, I probably also want to adjust the position of this tree here because the tree is in the center of the road. So the tree is not really going to be in the center of the road. It will be off to the side. So now that that tree is off to the side, I can see um, you know, what's happening here in the 3D space. And if I go back and look at my camera view again, as I'm seeing this, as I drag my playhead through the animation, um, then I see what's happening there. And it looks like, oh no, it's just a, it's just kind of a view thing. The reason it looks like the tree is kind of going through the road is because the road hasn't been filled in with a color because you're seeing it through. So if I really wanted to do this properly, um, then I could look at the selected road and um, then I could go in here and I could take, uh, let's say I take my line tool and my white color, and I'll just fill in the ends on those uh, on that line there. And then I can use the paint bucket and paint it in. And now I think when I go back in my stage view, see how I'm not seeing the tree through that until I really start looking from the side. So, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to get around that if you're if you're looking at it from a from an oblique angle you will see a bit that it's a piece of paper. But now in any case, if I play through with my playhead, now I really see the animation happening on there. And I probably do want to go back and fill in the white color for that tree so I don't see the other trees behind it. Uh, but forgive me if I don't do that for this particular presentation.
So um, that's working in a 3D space. Some people might also want to integrate 3D models in. And um, there is a tutorial on how to do this on the website, but um, if you go to your 3D models library here, from the library, if you right click on the right hand side, you can import some files in there, and then you can browse to a shit or to a file. Like I have an OSB file here, or you can bring in an FBX file. Um, and so after you bring it into your library, I'll just create a new panel down here. So let me just hit P for a new panel. And then I can drag and drop the pirate ship here into my stage view. And now I can resize it with that box. So you can resize it, um, you can reposition it here. And just like with the other layers, you could set a first frame and a last frame and have it animate over time. So um, that's the first tip of the week on working in a 3D space. And I wanted to start with Storyboard Pro because um, there's a lot of users of Toon Boom out there that are using Storyboard Pro. And I think it could be really cool for you guys to start incorporating this. And um, I know I've shown this to quite a few Storyboard artists in person who are really excited about the idea of integrating this into their storyboards. And when you do it in the storyboarding phase the same way that you'll do it in the animating phase, then it really saves you time when you get to animation. Because sometimes what happens is if you plan your storyboard flat, when you go to 3D, it's not the same thing. It's, you're not replicating exactly what you have when you do it flat. So here, you're able to really do this in, um, in the same way that you're going to do when you get to animation. And so um, let's pick this up next week with a tutorial in Animate Pro and Harmony on how to achieve the multi-plane there. And, um, and then I can finish up a little bit with um, importing 3D assets. I'll probably do that the week after that, um, importing 3D assets into Harmony. So have a good week, guys, and I'll see you guys next week.